Only yesterday, I read that Warren Buffett just put $5 billion into Taiwanese semiconductor chip manufacturer TSMC. Within 20 hours of that news, we find out Tesla just placed a massive order. Very strange timing. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel on the Electric Viking. Great to see you. Welcome to all the new subscribers. Welcome back, everyone else. Thanks for tuning in. And thanks for supporting us by watching our videos, subscribing to the channel. It's fantastic to see so many new subscribers since we started this channel only about just over 18 months ago now. Tesla has just placed a reportedly massive order of next generation full self-driving chips with TSMC. We don't know the details yet on how what this exactly means in terms of how much better they are than the existing full self-driving chips. But word is there's a significant performance upgrade over Tesla's current hardware. Tesla has placed this massive order and now apparently they're one of TSMC's biggest customers. I don't know if this is true. That's what people are saying. Back in 2016, Tesla started building a team of chip architects led by legendary chip designer Jim Keller to develop their own silicon chips. The goal was to design a super powerful and efficient chip to achieve self-driving in their vehicles without having to use additional hardware like custom-built autonomous vehicles operated Waymo and Cruise. Obviously, Waymo and Cruise use a whole lot of different technology, including LiDAR, etc. As you recall, back in 2019, I can't believe it's been three years, Tesla revealed their first custom-made chip called their Hardware 3.0. I spoke at the time about all the improvements it had versus the chips they were previously using from NVIDIA. NVIDIA didn't like that. And within, a, I think, a couple of days, they came out and said, oh, no, no, our chips are way better. And it became this thing that was kind of a bit ridiculous, really. Now, Tesla's chips claim a factor of 21 improvements in frame per second processing versus the previous generation Tesla Autopilot chips and hardware, which were powered by NVIDIA, while really only just slightly increasing power consumption. They made a big deal out of how little power the chip actually used considering its performance. Though when they launched that chip, they said they were already working on their next generation chip, which would be significantly better. And this, it looks like, is what they were talking about. For the first generation chip, Tesla actually worked with Samsung to develop it. But as of 2020, Tesla has been working with TSMC on this next generation chip. I'm really intrigued to know when this is actually going to go into cars, into Tesla cars and what differences this will have. So TSMC or Taiwan Semiconductor Manufacturing Company Limited is one of the biggest semiconductor chip companies in the world. And it was reported all over the media that within the last couple of days, Warren Buffett invested $5 billion into this company. A lot of people said, genius move, Warren Buffett started again, well done. So at that time I had a good look at the company and I wasn't so convinced that it was a genius move, but hey, Warren Buffett is a smart man and he probably has a team of people put together making these decisions who I'm sure know a lot more than I do. Now, the irony is it seems as though, you know, it's strange timing that they bought that stock and then a day later, no more than about a day or two later, we find out about this order that Tesla had placed with TSMC, which obviously TSMC would have known would have been made public, or maybe they released this information themselves. I'm not sure. TSMC had this to say. TSMC is receiving orders for vehicles and it is reported that it has replaced Samsung and won a large order for Tesla's new generation of fully automatic driver assistance chips, which will be produced at four slash five nanometers. Tesla is expected to become one of TSMC's top seven customers next year. It is the first time that TSMC's main customer has a pure electric car factory, which will help resist the impact of consumer electronics boom adjustments. Now, the interesting thing is, TSMC just also announced that they're building a semiconductor chip factory in Arizona, in Phoenix, Arizona, which they're saying will be their most advanced chip manufacturing plant in the world. And TSMC's plans come right when tensions between Washington and Beijing are rising over chip manufacturing with President Joe Biden imposing a sweeping 
set of controls on the state of advanced chips and chip making equipment to Chinese firms. So I'm not sure about how China feels about this new factory in Phoenix. I'm going to guess they're not so happy about it. However, Taiwan, had, I mean, they consider themselves a self-governing democracy that the Chinese Communist Party claims as its own territory, despite having never actually really controlled it. However, there's been some pretty significant and growing military aggression from Beijing in recent months, throwing a spotlight on the critical role the island plays in the global chip making industry. TMC actually accounts for around 90% of the world's super advanced computer chips, supplying tech giants like Apple and Qualcomm. So this order that Tesla has made, it'd be minuscule in comparison to the orders they're supplying to Apple. But it's probably big when you consider the amount of advanced driving chips that automakers are purchasing from semiconductor giants. So in terms of the size of their order, it's probably big for automakers, but small in comparison to that of Apple. Chips are very important products, TSMC's founder Morris Chang said on Monday at a press briefing in Taipei. It seems that people are only starting to realize this recently, and as a result, lots of people out there are envious of Taiwan's chip manufacturing. Advances in chip manufacturing require etching ever smaller transistors onto silicon wafers, and Chang said its plant in Arizona will produce three nanometer chips, TMC's most advanced technology. In 2020, the company had already committed to at least $12 billion in order to build its facility in Arizona. So it's quite expensive to build this facility. I mean, that's more than what Ford is spending on their entire Blue Oval University, where they're building a bunch of different factories to build electric cars and batteries and motors and all those sorts of things. At the time in 2020, TSMC said the facility will utilize TSMC's five nanometer technology for semiconductor wafer fabrication and create over 1,600 high-tech professional jobs directly. Production is expected to begin in 2024. I not only believe, but know for a fact that the cost of manufacturing chips in the US will be at least 55% higher than in Taiwan, Chang said at a press meeting on Saturday on the sidelines of APEC. But that does not mitigate against moving some capacity to the US. The chip manufacturing process we moved over is the most advanced of any company in the US, and that is very important to us. Now, if it does cost 55% more, to manufacture these chips in the United States. I'm kind of curious as to why they would have chosen to do it. And I'm also curious as to why it would cost that much more. I mean, it must be very labor intensive because ultimately if the chips are produced mostly through automation processes through robotics, which is what I expected, then you wouldn't think there'd be a significant increase in the price to manufacture them in the US versus what there is in Taiwan. Chang's comments came right after Warren Buffett's Berkshire Hathaway disclosed it had purchased a $4.1 billion stake in TSMC. The fate of the small island of Taiwan's chip industry has become a bit of a global concern. Experts have warned that any disruption to Taiwan's chip supply could paralyze production of key equipment, impacting almost everyone in the world. I actually lived in Taiwan for nearly a year and worked there, and it was quite an interesting experience. It's actually the most mountainous country in the world, but the majority of the population live on the coast where it's not so mountainous. It was quite an interesting experience living there. It's very, very different to the West. And one of the things I loved about it was the cost of food. Food was very, very affordable. It cost me about $2 to get dinner every night, and it was a good meal. It was a seriously good meal with vegetables and protein and you know everything you want there's a lot of things i miss about it one of them was it was almost always sunny so it's going to be interesting to see tesla's next full self-driving chip i'm assuming we'll find out more information about this chip and what it's capable of within the next few months let me know your thoughts if you know anything about it let us know in the comment section below as always my friends thank you for watching and i'll see you again Bye bye